Welcome <laughs> into Four Downs. This is where we are going to be taking a look at the four most impactful slash important plays from each Penn State football game. I'm going to be releasing these the Monday after every game, and I'll give you guys kind of an in-depth, behind-the-scenes look at uh, what's really going on on the field. Now, today is mainly going to be looking at Andy Kotonicki and this Penn State offense. It's new, it's exciting, and we saw it just look different out on the field. Uh, seven pass plays went for over 15 yards. Another one went for 14 yards. Another one went for 13 yards. We had four 40-yard plays. Uh, I believe two of those were Nick Singleton rushes, and then one was to Amari Evans, 55-yard reception, and then the other one was that Trey Wallace uh, touchdown reception that really kind of got everything going. Uh, and this the explosive play rate. And now explosive play is a rush that is over 10 yards or a pass play that's over 15 yards. We sat at about 16% of Penn State's offensive plays were explosive plays from this game against West Virginia. That is a really good number. Uh, normally you want to be over 12 to 13% and then you're, in a, you're living in a really good world. 16 uh, is really exciting. And this Andy Kotonicki offense is promising to be really effective for Drew Aller and company. I don't know if this one's a good fit for you, Landon. You sure about that, Matt? Which one is this? The Honda Ridgeline. I'm driving this home. Let's go do the paperwork with Lewis right now. Let's go. Come on down to Bobby Ray Al Honda of State College. Brought to you by Bobby Ray Hall Honda of State College. Driven by a higher standard. Okay, so this first play that we're looking at here isn't even really play number one, but I want to talk about Andy Kotonicki's influence on Drew Aller. So up to this point, Drew Aller had kind of struggled, uh, missed a couple passes, and then completed one to Trey Wallace that should have been uh, a little bit more on target. So you can't see here, but they start out with a quad formation bunch at the top of the screen. They motion Nick Singleton down all the way across the line and then into the flat. So what that does is watch this flat defender right here. Now, when he gets to that juncture point of Trey going on that kind of slant sit route and Nick continuing on to the flat, he has to make a choice. He has to follow the guy going to the flat. So what Andy Cotto, Nick, and if not, he would have had no response. If Nick Singleton never motioned down, there would have been no responsibility for this flat player to go into the flat. He could have stuck on Trey Wallace. But because Andy Cotto, Nick, motioned Nick Singleton all the way across the field and pulled this flat defender out, he created a really easy completion for Drew Aller. Uh, to really get him going. And from this point on, like I said, he struggled a little bit. Drew Aller didn't blink after this. This is the offensive coordinator helping out his quarterback, getting him into rhythm and giving him a really easy completion and getting Trey Wallace going, who was really big in this game. Now, moving on to the actual play I want to talk about was this touchdown pass to Trey Wallace that was about 50 yards. Um, first thing I want, to, I want to talk about is always confusing the defense. He does this fake power. So normally on real power, this guard right here, he pulls, he knocks out that defensive end. But on this one, he's pulling and then lining him up and pass blocking. Well, what that does is it kind of gets some suck from these linebackers. Suck means that they get pulled into the line of scrimmage. And now, like I said, Drew Aller was struggling a little bit with accuracy. He just got confidence built up from his uh, offensive coordinator there. And now I deliver one on the numbers to Trey Wallace. That is an absolute dot by Drew Aller, and I don't think if Andy Kotonicki didn't start to build that confidence with that play I just showed you before this, I don't know if Drew puts it on the money like that. Now he's feeling confident um, that he's going to deliver. And so what Drew Aller sees here, guys, is West Virginia runs a ton of cover three, meaning they have three guys deep, and they have this middle linebacker kind of covering the middle of the field. Now where there are some weaknesses to a cover three defense is rate in between that middle linebacker and safety. So what Trey Wallace does here is he runs a really nice skinny post. Julian Fleming is on a deep corner route and then boom, breaks inside right there. Drew Aller identifies it's cover three and says, hey, you know, this is a tough pass. I can't float it, but if I put it on the money, that gap is there in cover three every time. Hits him, boom, completion, and we are off celebrating. So there's a lot of little things that Andy Kotonicki is doing here that is helping Drew Aller out, helping his offense out. But this just gets me excited. And then on top of that, I talked about the, the action, the play action in the, in the 
for the offensive linemen here, they do a great job holding up in protection. I mean, look at that pocket. This is a little bit of not super long protection, but that is beautiful. That's that you uh, that you want to see for your quarterback. Stand back, deliver, and he puts it on the money. <laughs> Okay, so this next play I want to talk about is this Nick Singleton 40-yard touchdown run that really got, got him going and then I think got the fan base excited because we haven't seen this Nick Singleton for a long time and Andy Kotonicki is bringing him out. But let's really break down what happened in this play. So the first thing I want to show you guys, and you can't really see at the beginning, but Amari, Amari Evans is coming on this orbit motion, meaning that he's coming around, circling around Drew Aller. So what I want you to watch is this Mike linebacker right here. As soon as he see Amari Evans come on this motion, he has to start going out. He has to follow him. That's his rules. Andy Kotonicki knows that. He, so he, he knows I'm taking him out of the play. So effectively, Andy Kotonicki just took a seven-man box. There's seven defenders for West Virginia inside the box. Now he made it a six-man box. That is how you give your players just you know better opportunity. So now you see really well blocked up here. The offensive line actually does a really good job. The defense line shifts last second. They respond, uh, do have some really good double teams there between Sal Wormley and Anthony Donka. And then, but I want to watch, I want you to watch this. Right here, when he when he Nick Singleton goes to take off, you see that that Mike linebacker is finally starting to come back into the play a little bit. If Andy Kotonicki did not bring him away from the ball with that orbit motion, he would be right there to make this a 10-yard gain. Instead, it is a 40-yard gain because Andy Kotonicki's pre-snap motion. That is what Andy Kotonicki brings to this offense. And then, once again, we got to give a shout-out to the offensive line. They had a great day. This is classic counter-run, pull your backside tackle, pull your backside guard, and it hits right down the hash. I mean, that is where this run is designed to open, right there. They part that thing like the Red Seas. The linebacker's pulled out of his gap, and Nick Singleton is back to doing what Nick Singleton does. All right, we got to talk about what happened at the beginning of this game with the back-to-back -back fumbles. Now, Drew Aller, you see him there. He is fired up uh, and not happy. So it, it was very clear that the Penn State offense was arguing that the West Virginia defense uh, simulated the snap count, meaning that they and Penn State snap count is something like this. Ready, go. It's a clap. So someone clapped on the West Virginia defense. That's what Drew Aller's saying. I'm looking here. If you see that cornerback up at the top of the screen, it looks like he may clap his hands right there. I don't know if you see it. I, I don't know. But needless to say, I, I'm talking to Nick Dawkins tonight. He's coming on a radio show that I'm doing So uh, with, with uh, Goon, Keith Conlin, and Neas Hawkins. So I'm going to get the scoop on what really happened. We're going to talk to Doc about that. But this is where, and I'm, we're going to break down the defensive side of this here now. I just wanted to show this piece. But let's talk about, this is where the Penn State defense really comes into play being impactful. Now, this is on West Virginia. They fumble the snap. They bring someone in a motion and snap it right into the wide receiver. Now, Zach Frazier, their All-American center who went in the second round of the Pittsburgh Steelers, graduated. He is no longer there. Center messes up the snap. And that is really significant because West Virginia, having the ball on our 30, 0-0, zero zero, this game could have been really, really different if it wasn't for this defense. But something that I want to point out here is what Abdul Carter does when Garrett Green really goes for this ball. Garrett Green pretty much has it recovered. He kind of has it in his grasp. Abdul Carter, sorry, it's kind of grainy, but Abdul just punishes him. He pushes him as hard as he can in the back, and it, it doesn't look super hard, but he kind of hits him pretty hard. And that makes Garrett Green re-fumble the ball. Jalen Reed is then able to pick it up. It's a turnover. So they might have had the ball, you know, second in, uh, second in whatever it is, 25, instead of us having the ball. So that's huge from Abdul Carter there to be doing that. And then I won't play it right now, but you can go on my Twitter. I posted about it. Later in the game, Garrett Green fumbles the ball when uh, uh, Smith Vilbert strips him. And Denai picks up the ball. Garrett Green could have dove on it, but he got scared because Abdul Carter hit him so hard here. He didn't want that to happen again, so he didn't go for it, and it was an easy recovery later in the game. This is the type of stuff where the defense imposes their will, and it makes the offense not want to play anymore. So shout out to the Penn State defense for continuously wreaking havoc on these poor offenses, and Tom Allen is picked up right where Manny Diaz left off. <laughs> 
All right, we are back talking Andy Kotonicki and his wizardry, man. Uh, this is fun stuff, this touchdown pass to Tyler Warren. Uh, but let's talk about why Tyler Warren was so open in the first place. So the first thing is, is that Nick Singleton coming in this jet motion, uh, linebackers have to respect that. When you do something like that, it has to be respected. The linebackers have to rock over, meaning they have to shift to the left or their right in this case, and respect this Nick Singleton motion. On top of that, we got Sal Wormley right here. Once again, if you notice kind of uh, something that continues to happen on these big plays, we are pulling our guards a lot, even if it's not a run. We're pulling them as kind of a fake run motion to really get those linebackers pulled down. He is helping out his quarterbacks. I love this from Andy Kotonicki. So the linebackers, you see right here, they start about five yards of depth. Because of this motion, because of the pulling, because of Nick Singleton on the jet motion, they now, by the time they realize Bo Prabula actually has the ball, they're pretty much at almost at the line of scrimmage. They're at like one yards of depth now. So that is Andy, just, just Andy Kotonicki making his decisions uh, so much easier for the quarterback. Now, on top of that is, once again, cover three defense. West Virginia loves to play this soft cover three. Now, the one thing that is the hardest to cover in cover three is kind of this seam route. Tyler Warren does a good job. It's almost a wheel seam route, finds that soft spot, and it has never been an easier pass for Bo Pabula right here. But and it's just such it's so open because Andy Kotonicki schemed it open. And I think this is something that Penn State fans were wishing for for a while. Have an offensive coordinator again like Joe Moorhead, where it felt like he was making the guys open. You didn't have to throw someone open. You didn't have to rely on Drew Aller to make every single play. The plays are there to be made. And then you add Bo Prabula in, and it even adds another run threat in the defensive mind. Their antenna goes up. Hey, Bo's in, Bo's in. He's going to probably run the ball. No, sir. He can throw it too. And Andy Kotonicki is going to make sure it is wide open for him all through just pre-snap motion adjustments. All right, that was four downs with Landon Tangwall. Like I said, guys, we're going to be doing this every single Monday, breaking down four of the most significant plays from the game from that prior weekend. Let me know if you have any comments, suggestions. Leave those below. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace.